Thank you. Um, yeah, so let's start with uh, the first discussion session of the day on uh, proving dualities. So as usual, 20 minutes of uh, setup. Those 20 minutes, let's try to keep them to 20 minutes. So um, she and Rajesh, please, 20 minutes. And, uh, and then the 30 minutes, we are not very strict. We can go a little bit into the coffee break. So that is the more relaxed part. So uh, she, please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so uh, Rajesh and I will uh, uh, discuss uh, some aspect of uh, proving dualities. Uh, I think I will uh, talk about uh, what to prove and Rajesh will talk about how to prove. Um, and I'd like to uh, begin by reflecting a bit on you know, what string dualities mean and what we actually want to prove. Um, and the reason, uh, part of the reason is I, I feel like our standard for what a duality is has evolved and improved uh, over the years. Um, and, uh, and I think it's important to uh, be clear about uh, you know, the content of the duality, what is actually defined, uh, and be careful about you know, things that, you know, that are not actually defined and maybe just wishful thinking, uh, and to avoid the kind of circular uh, reasoning. OK, so, um, so first of all, uh, I should say that I'm restricting myself to string dualities. I'm not talking about field theory du dualities. Now, uh, string dualities are a little bit different from field theory dualities in the sense that um, the typically field theory duality, we talk about the equivalence between two different theories with different coupling parameters. Now, that kind of equivalence is not a symmetry because it changes the parameter of the theory, a priori, right? Whereas in string theory, these parameters are verbs of fields and the duality is a transformation on the field. Um, so that in that sense, you have a symmetry of the theory and then furthermore, all the symmetries in string theory are expected to be gauge symmetries. So um, one notion of string duality is a um, non-perturbatively realized um, gauge symmetry. Uh, and these examples of these uh, involve T-duality, mirror symmetry, S-duality, and so forth. Um, and, um, uh, and I would say that these dualities are not, um, this kind of dualities in the sense are not just uh, properties enjoyed by the theory, but uh, they are also essential to the, uh, the, the very definition of the string theory, for example, um, uh, you know, they are essential for the existence of monodromy brace and a uh, uh, more general class of string vacua, such as the uh, F-theory vacua. Uh, so this is one uh, sense of duality we speak of. Now, there are uh, some other kinds of dualities that we speak of that are closely related in various ways, but uh, I would think conceptually um, uh, slightly different. So another sense of duality is uh, simply when we say that there are different weakly coupling limits of um, in the same modular space of string vacua. Uh, of course, there are well-known examples of type one heterotic SO32 duality and uh, relation between type 2A and M theory and 11D M theory and so forth. Um, now, in each of these cases, um, um, you know, uh, let's say in the type one heterotic uh, duality, um, we understand perturbation theory in principle uh, from both sides. And of course, the, the big question here is to what extent they can be the perturbation they can be extend beyond perturbation theory and um and match in the middle and um, um you know there, there's a lot to say about this but uh, um but you know due to lack of time let me go on to holographic duality which is uh the third and probably the most uh, uh important type of dualities that we'd like to to understand um and um um i'd like to make a few comments on uh the evolving standards of derivation duality. After all, you know, these dualities are not pulled out of the hat. So they were good uh, physical motivation. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, with, with better understanding the, uh, what, what the standards of what duality is supposed to be and how, how what it constitutes a derivation has improved. Um, let me take the sequence one string uh, matrix model, matrix quantum mechanics duality as an example. Um, now, um, in the, uh, uh, you know, in the early 90s, when this duality was uncovered, uh, at least uh, the way I learned from reading the papers, uh, is that this is uh, the pic this based on the picture uh, that you can discretize the world sheet and it looks like diagrammatic expansion of measured quantum mechanics. But this is rather schematic. There's a lot of uh, freedom here. Um, and in particular, uh, uh, to me, the most um, uh, unsatisfying uh, thing about this, uh, this picture, it doesn't, is a bit too schematic, it doesn't really explain why it is the specific Roche CFT and matrix quantum mechanics are involved on the two sides of duality. Uh, in fact, uh, 
this worksheet, as we know now, it, that involves, you know, Liouville theory with, with central charge 25 is in a certain sense strongly coupled. And it's really only formulated precisely in the years after this duality was, uh, uh, was uh, understood to some extent. Um, and, uh, and then of course, in the uh, early 2000s, there's a uh, renewed, uh, there's a new way of looking at this duality um, uh, by thinking of it as some kind of holographic duality uh, based on thinking about ZZ brains in C equals one string theory. Um, but I would say that this is not on the same footing as how we normally understand ADS safety in the decoupling limit, because um, I would say that there's actually no decoupling limit uh, in the story that really explains why you end up with the specific matrix quantum mechanics. Um, uh, so I would say that what we actually want is to show that um, the open string field theory uh, of the ZZ brain in sequence one string theory is equivalent to the eigenvalue of fermion dynamics not in the absence of the Fermi C, but in the presence of the Fermi C. In fact, if, if I draw, look at the picture of the eigenvalue in the presence of Fermi C, um, you know, sur surfing the top of the, the, the Fermi C, it looks a bit like the picture of what we expect to be the naive quote unquote tachyon potential. Um, um, and um, uh, in, in particular, uh, what I would really under, like to understand here, which I think can be made uh, very concrete, um, is um, uh, the rolling tachyon, the rolling open string tachyon, because uh, this is a uh, solution to the, uh, unlike, you know, the, the ZZ brain uh, with the open string tachyon set to zero, which is uh, unstable configuration and doesn't really make sense uh, at the quantum level, um, the open string tachyon, the rolling tachyon, makes sense as, um, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the full quantum theory, uh, that's what we expect. Um, and it has both an open string description and potentially a closed string view description. And, um, um, and I think it would be very nice to, uh, if we can derive this uh, from open plus closed string field theory on the ZZ brain. And I think there's uh, by now uh, sufficient technology to attack this problem from the open plus closed string theory perspective. Uh, in particular, I want to uh, uh, highlight uh, a paper of uh, Min Jae Cho from a couple of years ago uh, in which he constructed explicitly how to uh, using this hyperbolic vertices following uh, the work of uh, Costello and Zwiebach um, that potentially would allow for um, a, a derivation of this kind of relation um, passing from a mostly open to a mostly closed uh, string field description by string field redefinition. Um, I want to make some uh, comment about uh, the more conventional ADS CFP, ADS 5 times S5. And I want to in particular address uh, you know, this uh, statement that people sometimes make you know, <clears throat> shouldn't we simply view that ads CFT duality as a definition of string theory? The A equals four supreme males is number two formulation of type two B string theory it is five times S five. Um, now, uh, if so, uh, you know, the common duality I would say is that one has to understand how the A equals four supreme males in this case reproduce everything we already know about type two B string theory. That is, perturbed strings, deep brains in flat space uh, with some deformation possibly. Uh, and the background independent low energy effective um, field theory. Um, and in particular, uh, uh, one thing I like about, uh, about this duality is, is that uh, we believe that we can, in principle, at least some of us believe that we can, in principle, produce the non perturbative graviton S matrix of type 2B in flat space by taking a certain infinite N by finite GMLs limit. Um, there are these uh, <coughs> dictionaries that has been written down. Um, and I would say, um, I'll pose the question. So do we know whether this prescription results in the unitary S matrix of gravitons? After all, um, we think, at least I think, in type 2B string theory, the super gravitons are all the asymptotic states there are. Um, and so if you can produce all the matrix elements in principle by taking such a limit, and, uh, uh, and that's supposed to be exact at finite GS, um, then, uh, uh, the question is whether it is unitary, and because if it's unitary, then we're sort of done. Uh, after all, uh, you know, one, one, well, partially done in the sense that what well, one of the important goal of any theory of quantum gravity is to, to have a calculable framework for producing non perturbative graviton S matrices, and, uh, and sounds like this would achieve that. Uh, but I don't really know how to prove the unitarity of this S matrix, and I think that would be an interesting challenge. Um, and uh, uh, and finally, let, let me just uh, address the question of uh, to what extent on the two sides of the you defined. I, I think it's important to, to always keep that in, in mind. Um, now, uh, most of us believe that the N equals four supremos is number of defined, not 
yet by the standard of a mathematician, but by all the standards of physicists, I would say that the, the, we have good confidence that there is well defined either from the perspective of lattice or Hamiltonian truncation or from bootstrap perspective. Um, but what do we mean by type 2B string theory in ADS5 times S5? Um, now, in practice, um, a non trivial result has been obtained by thinking about uh, Green Schwartz effective um, action, or I call it effective action, because I think that is the real logic behind it, uh, together with integrability, which um, uh, appears to uh, fix all the ambiguities, kind of terms in principle, if you try to quantize it. But I would say that that's not the first principle definition, um, because after all, integrability only applies to very specific backgrounds, and it doesn't explain or allow you to say what happens when we deform the theory between different backgrounds. Um, I would say that the, um, at least in, you know, I, I learned in textbooks. Minutes. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm wrapping up very quickly. Um, I learned in textbooks about the, uh, you know, definition for derivative string theory and RNS formalism. And I would say that the RNS closed superstring field theory um, does provide a first principle definition of what we mean by type 2B string theory, A S five, five times S5, at least perturbatively in one over the radius. Um, uh, we can think view that as a background definition of flat space and then expand around this background solution and try to extract string spectrum and interaction. Um, so uh, we can discuss you know, uh, alternative formalism and to what extent we can establish their equivalence and, and so forth. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, I, I, I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rajesh, could you set up your screen, screen please while we thank Chi for a nice first half? Yeah, I, I think uh, she needs to. Um... No, no, you can start sharing and ah, just yeah. you okay. will run over she and kick him out <laughs> automatically. <laughs> Not my intention, but uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so thank you uh, again uh, to the organizers for uh, putting together this uh, one of the, I think, the most uh, participatory strings meetings ever, and uh, also for inviting me to this. Uh, 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 this session. Uh, so uh, you had just a little while ago heard from Matthias about uh, a proposal to understand the world sheet dual uh, to, uh, to free super young Mills theory. Uh, I want to put this in a slightly broader context and make some general remarks about deriving ADS safety, uh, which uh, are meant to be pegs for the discussion that follows. So uh, she asked indeed uh, what are dualities, but I'll narrow my scope and uh, I'll focus on gate string dualities. And uh, here some of you might be asking, uh, why do you want to derive gate string duality? Didn't one do it uh, long ago? Uh, I think the more fruitful way of phrasing the question is, what is it that we can learn from deriving ADS CFT that we didn't know before? Uh, and um, in this, when you frame it this way, then uh, if the answer hinges on how exactly you are going to derive uh, ADS uh, CFT or gate string duality. So, uh, so this is what I will mostly focus on, and I will make, uh, I, I will come from a particular perspective and a strategy. And of course, there have been many other approaches, but some of which have connections and resonances with what, with what I have to say. And uh, hopefully some of that can be fleshed out in the discussion. So I, I, I see deriving gate string duality as sort of like building a bridge between two uh, river banks. Uh, and um, each of which has its, uh, has its own landscape and are well studied in its own terms. Uh, so, uh, and of course, when you build a bridge, one of the first things you have to pick is a good spot to build it. And uh, as you heard in the uh, talk by Matthias, uh, I think the free gauge theory or the dual tensionless or small radius ADS string theory is the right, is the sort of the uh, practical place to build this bridge. Uh, and so, what I will have to say is, uh, uh, and then of course, when you build a bridge, you sort of build from both sides, you start from uh, each side and hopefully you're going to meet. Uh, and uh, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll try to therefore make some remarks in general about going from strings to fields and uh, then from fields to strings. So gate string duality is an open closed string duality as we uh, appreciated. Uh, so a question arises here, which is, how exactly do deep brains emerge from a closed string world sheet from the closed string uh, description? Uh, 
very long ago in, in the context of the duality of the Chan Simons theory with the conifold, with Cumberland, we proposed and we proposed an answer to this question uh, through through what uh, through a linear sigma model perspective, a gauge linear sigma model perspective, which we felt actually uh, has perhaps wider applicability. And the answer is uh, what's uh, written here that we uh, propose that the linear sigma model has two phases: a Higgs and a Coulomb phase, which coexist as the Toft coupling goes to zero as you go to the free theory. Uh, so to be specific for the conifold, the conifold can be described by, uh, the conifold is a geometry uh, given by this equation for four coordinates uh, for, uh, for X's in uh, C4 subject to this constraint. Uh, so the linear sigma model actually writes this in terms of a U1 gauge theory with charged, with a pair of charge fields a and opposite charge fields B, uh, such that the space-time fields are bilinear neutral composites of these uh, charged underlying charge fields. And the uh, uh, Higgs phase is the one where the charge fields have a non-zero expectation value as always, but as lambda goes to zero, there is the possibility of a new Coulomb phase, uh, which is uh, where, the, where the theory gets on Higgs. And it is this Coulomb phase that we proposed it leads, it sort of nucleates the holes on the world sheet. And uh, this, uh, the more complete derivation for the case of the Chan Simons theory was made by Hiroshi and Kumran uh, some years afterwards. And in fact, this is a very nice picture from their paper uh, of this Coulomb phases sort of nucleated, nucleating the large end world sheet. Approaching from the other side, the question is sort of how the holes close up. Uh, as opposed to the holes opening up from the uh, closed string world sheet. And here I just want to leave you with a picture again. Uh, I, and this is essentially the key point here is that starting from a large end Toft diagram in the free theory, there's a very canonical way in which you can associate a closed uh, Riemann surface. Uh, to it, and uh, which um, and this uh, and the Feynman diagrams uh, appropriately can sort of have a dense covering of the modelized space, and this proceeds by something called the Strabble parameterization of modelized space, and I don't have the time to explain that over here, but I, I just want to mention that there is a very the natural way in which you can sort of glue up these. Uh, a double line graphs to form a closed Riemann surface. Uh, and in fact, this picture has a lot of resonances with uh, some of the work in the integrable uh, literature, where again, in considering higher point functions of the Young-Mills theory uh, through the hexagon program in particular, you're trying to build up closed string world sheets. Coming to uh, the, uh, the talk of Matthias today, uh, and uh, so let's try to see how uh, this uh, fits in with what I said before. Uh, so, uh, so Matthias uh, described for you uh, this twistorial gauge linear sigma model. Uh, and um, uh, I want to emphasize here its structural naturalness in some sense. Not only is it a natural generalization of the ADS three times S3 case, which we now understand quite well in multiple ways from both the field theory and the string theory point of view, but it also has close connections with uh, two, uh, two other topics which you, with Matthias mentioned, namely the open string theory, uh, which uh, of the same open twister string theory, which gives rise to superannual scattering amplitudes as we heard yesterday, uh, and the BMN light cone gauge string theory, which in some ways this is a covariant, gives a covariant organization of the spectrum uh, of uh, the BMN, uh, uh, of the BMN picture. But uh, more specifically, coming back to the remarks uh, that I made at the beginning, um, uh, the gauge linear sigma model, I, I believe, is very reminiscent of what we had uh, for the conifold. Um, in, uh, in, uh, to be more precise, the twister fields, if one looks at correlators, and both for the ADS3 and we believe for the ADS5 case as well, the twister fields have vortex-like behavior, uh, and uh, they have this non-trivial winding near the closed ring insertions, 
And in some sense, the core of the vortex is where the Coulomb phase is nucleated, where the theory is unhinged. So this is what, in some sense, is happening uh, even in these um, in these ADS5 and ADS3 uh, gauge linear sigma models. And uh, the uh, twister open string, we believe, when we understand the collection better, would be in some ways the description of deep rings in this closed string theory as appropriate for the small radius limit. Another thing which is very much in the lines is the fact that the world sheet, as you saw, is, is rigid. There are W, there are in each spectrally float sector, there are these finite number W of these string beads, so to say, on a necklace, which gives exactly what the yang mill spectrum gives you. And so in, there's really not much dynamics on the world sheet. And uh, this is also reflected in the localization and modelized space that Matthias mentioned that correlators exhibit, which is once again very much like the A model. So I believe that, it, the, that there's, it's uh, much closer in many ways to what we had for the Cornifold and Chern Simons theory than might naively be, uh, naively be um, uh, thought or expected. And coming from fields to strings, this picture of these rigid um, uh, this rigid world sheet is very much like the Toft, uh, pic the picture I showed you of how the Toft diagrams, the double lines are glued up because you can think of each of these strips as sort of rigid strips. And this is what we see very explicitly in the ADS3 case. And in fact, uh, we showed uh, sometime a few months ago that the Feynman diagrams of this metric product CFT uh, correspond precisely to discrete points on the modelized space through this treble construction, uh, and that matches exactly with what the world sheet gives you. And uh, uh, these uh, discrete points are the ones which admit covering maps, and um, they correspond to at least in a certain limit uh, for uh, treble surfaces with integer length. And there seems to be a more intricate version of this picture in uh, four-dimensional Yang mills in terms of covering space uh, in ambitwister space. And um, uh, this is something we, uh, we are currently working out. But I believe this picture is therefore more general and it's a realization of this Strebel construction of the world sheet from the Feynman diagrams. Uh, and uh, both these pictures, uh, whether you, uh, both these pictures from the field theory side or from the well, uh, from the Feynman diagram side, uh, what they kind of tell you is that the these glued mm -hmm. Feynman world sheets, uh, these glued Feynman world sheets, um, and I'm nearly done, uh, uh, are not only having some covering, but they also have a non-trivial radial profile, which is essentially hugging the ADS boundary. And I think this is very significant in how we try to understand the reconstruction, the holographic reconstruction of the bulk space-time, uh, but uh, uh, this is something that needs to be fleshed out. So uh, I, what I, I'll just conclude by saying, returning to the original question I started it, what is it that we can hope to learn through a derivation of ADS-CFT? Uh, well, I've made a list of various things. I'm happy to elaborate on many of these in the discussion session. I think the uh, slides are up on the web page and the Slack channel, uh, but uh, uh, but several of these I think are new. Uh, we get new perspectives on uh, several of these questions. I think uh, through this explicit realization that I tried to sketch out for you. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let's thank Rajesh uh, and uh, she once again. Very good. Um, yeah, those were. Very, um, Let's start uh, with uh, the questions. Again, as Rajas said, please check the website or the Slack for many inspiring points, but I'm sure there will be many, many questions. And as usual, I'll start by um, people that have not yet participated. So I'll start with Spenta, or not much at least. Hi. Yeah, okay. Hi. Uh, I was participating, but quietly. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> no, no, I <laughs> so, so I have two questions. The first question is, uh, you know, this uh, C equal to one matrix model, uh, one of the reasons uh, a lot of us uh, worked on it uh, very hard in the early 90s is because uh, the two dimensional string theory has a dual black hole, uh, has a black hole solution. And I'd like to ask uh, whether there is any progress in the recent times on some deformation of uh, the uh, C equal to one matrix model uh, that can actually uh, throw some light on this problem. 
uh, I, I would say that uh, the, the last progress I'm aware of that has been published is in Juan's 2005 paper. Uh, I hope uh, if others uh, you know, have uh, worked on it, could, could correct me. Um, and uh, the, the uh, uh, um, you know, the, the, the idea is that you can take, um, I mean, the, the, the way, uh, I, I think it's fair to say that the way Juan uh, describing his paper was, uh, was a bit obscure, was hidden, a little bit hidden there. Uh, but uh, um, uh, the, the idea is that you take a large number of FCT brains in C equals one string theory and then take a certain uh, decoupling limit at finite temperature, where you have a large number of FCT brains, but they all receive off to infinity at finite temperature. And you are supposed to, uh, it's supposed to give a well defined foot to like limit. Um, and um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the kind of background on the closing background, such that it uh, gives rise to a class of deformation that interpolates between the thermal vacuum of sequel to street theory um, and, uh, and the black hole background, uh, the, or, in, or the sign Louisville. Um, and uh, uh, you know, with, with uh, uh, Bruno Balthazar and Victor Rodriguez, we, we've been uh, exploring this in more detail uh, recently, and uh, we're hoping to perform some non-trivial check beyond what Juan did in, in, in his paper uh, 16 years ago, but uh, um, uh, we haven't uh, we haven't finished our analysis, so it's it's some uh, work in progress. Forgot to mention, please wave if you have a comment related to what was just said or what what is being discussed. Uh, so, uh, I should add that I, be, uh, I I I believe that picture is correct. Uh, Emil, please. Yeah. The, so uh, there's some a thread of work by Givan Kudasov, Rabinovich, and Sever who argued. Uh, in a paper that that the black hole solution is not normalizable. It's not part of the spectrum when the level of the SL2R uh, sigma model is less than one in, in some conventions. And so uh, I think there's pretty strong argument that, that every uh, example that's been examined where the level of the SL2R is less than one, the black hole is really not part of the spectrum. And the C equals one model is a prime example of that. Um, where, I mean, in a sense, it's impoverished by the fact that there are no non-abelian degrees of freedom. The matrix model, um, non-abelian degrees of freedom are shoved off to infinite energy uh, in, the, in the scaling limit that, that, that gives the, the, the duality. And so uh, um, there essentially are no black holes in those models. Can I, uh, can I reply to, to that? Uh, we're not talking about the same matrix model. Uh, so I'm talking about adding the FCT brain, which requires going to the lensing the sector. In fact, we do not know uh, the actual, the complete deal of the adding FCT brain per se, but in this, um, uh, the, the limit I'm talking about uh, involves the long string condensation. So, um, uh, so it's definitely not the singlet matrix model. In fact, uh, uh, in fact, we're currently uh, checking this, you know, in, 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 a non, in the non-singlet sector of the matrix model, which is, which is a very different model. Um, explicit with the nine billion degrees of freedom, uh, and uh, uh, and you know the the the, the dynamics is very non-trivial. It goes way beyond uh, the free fermion picture. Uh, I'm, I'll be happy to discuss the, the technical details, but it's not something that can be explained in a few minutes. Um, right. So uh, let's go on to Shota. Yeah, I also had a question to she so about this rolling talking stuff. So, uh, so am I understanding correctly that the duality uh, that you like showed in the equation, the both sides are kind of string theory rather than like a string theory equals matrix model. Uh, like the one rolling tachyon equals. Oh yeah, uh, uh, yes, yes. The, there I was uh, talking about a, uh, a sort of an open versus closed string uh, duality. Okay. Yeah, but then like you can also ask that same question in flat space rather than in in without talking about the sequels one context, right? Like there are roaring tachyon in flat space as well. And what what uh, bites you by considering uh, you're talking tachyon? about uh, are, are talking about close cl uh, closing tachyon or open string tachyon? Um, open string. Ta oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, so uh, open string uh, tachyon. I think, the, yeah. the reason I like the sequels one example mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. is because. Uh, first of all, it's um, you know it's free of the closing tachyon issue. So no, often uh, when we talk about bosonic extreme field theory, mm -hmm. um, you know w w there's this belief that you know at least at level of the looking at the, the, the way we think about the modern space, the open string field theory, a cubic open string field theory could cover the entire modern space with the, all the 
uh, mm -hmm. uh, which rhythm included, but um, but the, the closed string tachyon will kill you, right? Um, uh, right. But in sequence one string theory, there's no problem with a, with a closed string sector uh, at all. And so now, if, but, but still, if you want to do the quantum open string field theory, perturbatively, you still have the open string tachyon, which will run in loops and that'll be a pro problem. But I think if you expand around the rolling tachyon, there'll be no problem. So you can, I think you can do the quantum open string field theory around the rolling tachyon background. Uh, and and I, so I think this is a good setup to, to explore this, uh, uh, the, the, this kind of uh, fewer definition that turn, goes from between open and closed string fields. And you think like a, you can explore it just by the Warshi technique? Uh, by the, uh, yes. Uh, in, in fact, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, I don't know if Minjay is here, but the, the, a couple of years ago, the Minjay wrote a nice paper, Minjay Cho wrote a nice paper uh, extending uh, Costello as Weibach's construction in which he um, showed explicitly there's a consistent construction of this uh, hyperbolic uh, open string, uh, open closed string field vertices uh, with two parameters, the kind of length of uh, these colors, uh, uh, second principle colors that allow you to, to, to dial, and you can you can dial these parameters, and uh, which correspond to different solutions to the BV master equation that allow you to go between some mostly open to the mostly closed uh, a version of the open plus closed field theory. I see. Yeah. What? Well, what? I just wanted to ask, like, I do you, do we really need to go use the string field theory, or like, is there a chance I, that we can I, see something already? In the first well, quantized. Well, I, I think the from the Anshao perspective, I think Ashok has explored this uh, some years ago. But uh, but I yeah. think there are some questions that really requires uh, offshore technique to address. Okay. Uh, in particular, the energy, um, let's say, stored in uh, you know open stream fields versus closed stream fields. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. Uh, Ivano. Yes. Hi. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering if there are any recent efforts in understanding earlier string dualities involving other matrix models, like the BFSS uh, matrix model for M theory in uh, 11 uncompactified dimensions and other models like that. Uh, can I comment on that? Uh, sure. So, uh, I mean, I, I think that we've came a long way with the BFSS. I think uh, it's been uh, uh, shortly after the original paper, it's been uh, clarified by uh, you know several papers. Uh, uh, not try to name all the authors, uh, but uh, 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 that put it in the same context: the usual ads CFT duality, and I think that is the correct picture. Um, and uh, and then there has been very non-trivial checks of uh, black hole entropy, you know, in the in the bulk uh, in the spark geometry. Uh, versus, uh, you know, Monte Carlo study of uh, the free energy of the BFSS at final temperature. Um, so, so that was extraordinarily non-trivial. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, uh, I think IKKT matrix model, which is uh, sometimes mentioned in the same context, is on a very different footing. As far as, far as that is concerned, I'm not aware of any actual uh, picture of a duality in, in the sense that I don't know what the dictionary would be if you want to produce physics type 2b in flat sp space. The close thing I know is the thing that Ashok mentioned where IKKT makes his model provide a way to capture certain uh, Dean's non-corrections to graviton scattering. But beyond that, I don't, I'm actually not aware of any concrete, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 mapping involving IKKT. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's, uh, I'm sorry, jump a little bit to Samir. Uh, hi, thanks. Um, so I have a question uh, for uh, Rajesh and Matthias um, about this ADS5 uh, free string. So if I understand correctly, you're taking n to be strictly equal to infinity. So is that correct? Yeah. So you won't see black holes. In, yeah. Now, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, one could imagine doing a one over n expansion in, in, in uh, ADS3 that, uh, that can be done. Yeah. Uh, so but, yeah. That, that was the question. Can you contrast this with the in, in the, with the ADS3 case, so mm. beginning you were also saying that n is, you know, it's only the planar limit in ADS3. So what is the status now in ADS3? Do we understand black holes from this free string perspective? And if so, uh, uh, so firstly, I should say uh, Lawrence uh, Eberhardt, uh, uh, who is giving a talk today, I think uh, at the end of the session, will be talking a bit about uh, some of these uh, issues, uh, but. Uh, 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 especially to do with black holes, but uh, 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 but just even around the plate ADS3 vacuum, uh, many of the results that I uh, that were mentioned in Matthias's talk 
about correlation, correlators being localized, et cetera, hold in a genus expansion. Uh, so that was also something that uh, uh, that's been already also shown now by several people, including yeah, Laura. One over n expansion will never see a black hole, right? Because it's, it's a non perturbative object. Yeah, so I, I will, uh, maybe you should uh, ask Lawrence this after his, his talk. He has a, a particular viewpoint on this, uh, which uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 unless Lawrence wants to join, maybe uh, uh, wants to comment on it. Uh, uh, well, I can comment on it. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah uh, I mean, so I think it was already realized some years ago that actually the, uh, if you consider the perturb perturbative strength here in ADS3 with pure and SNS background, it won't describe a single symmetric orbifold, but rather like the ensemble of all symmetric orbifolds. So it's like the grand canonical ensemble of all the symmetric orbifolds. So you don't get one boundary CFT, but you get like sum over all the ends in the symmetric orbifold. Because of that, you essentially uh, can access finite n, I believe, um, because like you can now restrict like to some Legendre transform or something like that, and you can go to the finite end result. I so, see. Is it correct that one can account for the black hole entropy using this? Yeah, process? yeah. So, but it works a little bit different than what I expected. So, yeah. Stay tuned for my talk. I hope I can answer some of these questions. And, and, and can we do I, can we go for something similar in areas five or not? Um, I, I believe with the current techniques, no, but uh, I'm, I, I'd be happy to be surprised otherwise. No, I, I'm just trying to understand what is the difference? The, the difference, well, the very naive difference is that in ADS5, the background is created by D3 brains, and now you're throwing away in some probe strings and you're computing some perturbative string uh, partition function, and that will have a fixed number of D3 brains. Whereas in ADS3, you're creating the background since it's pure in SNS flux, you're having some fundamental strings in the background, and you have an NS5 brand in the background. So it's not very natural to keep the number of fundamental strings in the background fixed because you also have some probe string. So that's why you get this grand canonical uh, ensemble. That I think, but if you would uh, like describe the D1, D5 system, then I think it's again more natural to describe the canonical ensemble. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go to Veronica. Sorry. Um, so uh, this is a question for inspired by Rajesh's uh, last slide, which is, I was wondering whether you would like to elaborate on the, uh, what we learn about the quantum information sort of connections in the, in the duality. In the uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, I don't have anything very precise to say, except that I think um, and in, uh, in the slides that I put up, I actually stole a slide from Juan. Uh, Juan had a set of additional slides, which I think he didn't show. And so the, the last slide in my deck is actually uh, from Juan in which he has this, uh, I mean, many others also uh, have this tensor network picture of sort of building up entanglement and uh, creating the space time. Uh, so in some sense, I think in the tensionless limit, as I said in my last slide, the the world sheet is essentially at the boundary. So it has a very, it's hugging the boundary. It's sort of, uh, so, and, and what you have is this interact, non-interacting string bits and, uh, and the world sheet theory is free and it's just these partons, uh, these uh, uh, non-interacting string bits. And I think as you turn on the interactions, as you turn on Lambda, the, they, will, they will start getting entangled with each other and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, and in some way, I feel it's these string bits which will be kind of building up. I mean, the, in some ways, the string bits are, I think, going to be the basic units of the uh, no, of the of the tensor network uh, picture that will somehow grow. But it's a great thought, and uh, it, it would be great, of course. So uh, it's a, it's still probably a long way to understand that in any. Uh, in any precise detail, but I find this uh, string bit picture very suggestive in that regard. And the fact that it's sort of going in from, it sort of will go in from the boundary. In particular, is there a hint that it's the entanglement between the string bits that's somehow- No, no not yet. I mean, or... no, no, not yet. I don't see anything yet to be able to say that in any, with any confidence, but I would expect so. But, uh, 
Thank you. Yeah, um, let me pass to uh, Eric. And, uh... Thanks. Hi. So this is a little bit of a blast from the past for Rajesh and Sheep. Have we given up on embedding Vasiliev into string theory? We're trying to use that as a route to understanding proof of duality. And, and if so, is it, um, to, to piggyback on Rajesh's point, because we're not sure what we would learn in doing so? Uh, I can, uh, I, I, I mean, for the, I think for the ADS3 case, we, um, uh, so the short answer is no, I don't think so. I, in fact, I feel that uh, that's something uh, that's a promising avenue, which we will, we should, we now have the tools uh, to address that question much more precisely, uh, how exactly the Vasiliev theory is embedded in string theory. Uh, in ADS3, uh, uh, which is under more control right now, um, and there uh, we have an extended, the symmetric product has this extended higher spin symmetry, uh, which Matthias and I uh, sort of uh, explicated uh, some years ago. Uh, um, and uh, the, uh, and which is in some ways a sort of souped up Vasiliev theory. Uh, but now we have a dual world sheet understanding of where all those higher spin generators arise from the world sheet, how they sort of, um, uh, how the matter fields are sort of charged under them. Uh, we have a world sheet perspective on this, which I think should enable us to un understand in what sense you can kind of truncate to a sector of the string theory, uh, which is the Vasiliev theory and the matter interactions, uh, et cetera. And I, I find it very suggestive that it's a free field description on the world sheet as well. And it's sort of like in these old, uh, goes back to the old lore of sort of higher spin, uh, features on the world sheet getting reflected features in uh, target space. So I think the world sheet description of, of the free world, uh, for pre field world sheet description, uh, I think can teach us more about how the highest spin uh, 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 symmetry, which is realized on the dual free fields of the dual CFD, that, how that's realized in a very, I think in a more explicit way, but I think it has not been explored yet. And I assume that for ADS5 times S5, there'll be an analogous picture, but ADS3 times S3 seems like the place to start. I don't know if she has. No comments about ADS4 uh, from anyone. Uh, I, uh, I, I think what we heard about from Matthias uh, earlier today is the kind of thing that one should be doing uh, uh, from that perspective. Because uh, yeah, so some time ago, I, I also wondered how to you know write Vasiliev theory mm -hmm. as a, a topological string theory, and then maybe try to deform it to the you know real string theory. But uh, at least in the ADS4 context, um, but I find it hard to guess. You know, th this requires some guesswork because you're you're talking about the Borsche theory with a lot of gauge redundancy, and uh, it's uh, not totally clear what the what the rule of the or whether there's a rule or algorithm to, to how to proceed. Um, but uh, uh, so, so, you know, I have not really been thinking too much about that uh, in recent times, but uh, I, I think uh, what we heard from Matthias is the, the, the way to go from that perspective. I, I want to address something uh, Juan has in the chat about uh, the additional fields that are there in the free Yang Mills theory, which in some ways are supposed to hit the uh, higher spin gauge symmetry. Indeed, I think that they will play an important role and it's, that was one of the, uh, the, the things I was I had mentioned in my last slide as something to understand better how this Higgs mechanism sort of explicitly works because uh, we now can see from the world sheet what these other subleading reg trajectories are uh, and uh, how they uh, how exactly they could uh, lead to this sort of big uh, I think uh, what was it called La Grande Bouffe. Uh, uh, by Bianchi et al, this big Higgs mechanism uh, of uh, higher spin symmetries. But uh, yeah, uh, but nothing concrete uh, to say. Offer? Thanks. Uh, so I would like to make a suggestion uh, following up on the last point that uh, she was making. So maybe we should only call something a duality if both sides are really non perturbatively well defined, like in uh, quantum field theory dualities, and, and then it really makes sense to derive an equivalence between them. Well, other things should be called the correspondence, uh, like the ADS-CFT correspondence. And so in that case, as, as she explained, I mean, one side is, is well defined and 
the other side, namely the bulk, is only well defined semi classically in a one over n expansion or expanding around some semi classical uh, fixed points. And in that case, I mean, deriving a correspondence would mean being on the field theory side and deriving from that that when you expand around appropriate semi classical limits, uh, you get the, the correct one over n expansion and de Bruijn effects uh, and so on. As, as I mean, as, as Matthias described trying to do, and of course, there's been lots of progress on trying to do that. Uh, starting from free field theories, and hopefully eventually we will be able to do that in the n equals four case. But I don't think there's really any hope of uh, of having a non-perturbative description for the bulk theory in that case, because space-time itself only emerges, I mean, in, in semi-classical limits. So I doubt if ADS-CFT will ever be elevated to the level of a duality in this sense. But uh, but of course, we should all continue to derive it uh, in the sense of a correspondence, I mean, by showing that we get the correct semi-classical expansion. Yeah. So if I, if I can briefly respond, uh, I agree with you in spirit, uh, except uh, one point which I would like to, I think, uh, uh, this is related to what I mentioned about how one proves the duality. Uh, I can imagine a scenario in which one sort of tautologizes the duality in some way that uh, the string world sheet in many ways is the Yang-Mills uh, uh, theory and we see indications of that in the ADS3 case for correlators and, spec and, and the ADS5 case for the spectrum and so on. In this, in this tautologizing, uh, in this way of tautologizing the duality, you might, you might uh, learn how to non-perturbatively define the string theory as well in some way, because that might suggest since you know how the gauge theory is non perturbatively defined, perhaps in some optimistic scenario, you might learn how to define uh, the world uh, and in world sheet terms, non perturbatively define it in world sheet terms in such a way that it would sort of extend this tautology in some analytic way. But uh, it's uh, just a. So you mean something like a sensible, like, like a sensible, like you mean something like a sensible definition of a string field theory that would come out of such an approach or something like that? Yeah, yeah I, I can. Yeah, that's optimistic, but plausible. <laughs> Simon? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, uh, somewhat vague question about the tensionless strings in the ADS5 process file again. Uh, once you have the spectrum and the free theory, there, there's two natural things, two natural interacting theory you can go to. There's a user Yang Mills, but there's also just self dual Yang Mills, which has the same spectrum, but roughly half the interactions are turned off. And its correlators are much, much simpler. But yet they, they compute things like loop integrands that tell you something about the full theory. So I'm just wondering if there's any idea how to get self dual Yang mills from the uh, from from the tensionless string. Be very nice. Huh? I, I, my, um, I, I, I agree. I mean, at the level of the spectrum, you can't distinguish between the two. Um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I believe since our construction is sort of, uh, in a way, ambitorial, uh, it doesn't sort of, uh, uh, it doesn't uh, privilege right over left uh, in some way. So I, I, I believe that the natural interacting generalization will be that of the full Young Mills theory. But it's an interesting question whether there's some deformation. I mean, there is at the Young Mills level, I guess. Uh, and in the in the twister open string description, there's a very natural way in which you can sort of think of the pure Young Mills theory as a deformation of the self dual Young Mills theory. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's possible that you might see a reflection of that that uh, on the world sheet that there is perhaps a choice that you can make, uh, um, yeah, but uh, mm, but this is something, yeah, it's at the level of the interactions that I, uh, I can't really say uh, uh, either way at this stage, but uh, it's not impossible. Uh, I, I would think that it should, I mean, it should by rights come out, but uh, uh, but we don't know. Should us? Ah, <clears throat> uh, hi. Uh, address to Rajesh and Matthias. Uh, your your construction of the string world sheet had this n equals four superconformal uh, symmetry, and uh, if uh, um, if we expect that that interactions preserve that symmetry, then we could take that interaction all the way to the strong coupling end, and that would give us an n equal uh, that would give us a world sheet theory for two B theory in flat space with n equals four super uh, superconformal invariance. That sounds sort of interesting. Um, so, would you would you expect 
could we search for such a theory directly? Could we search for an n equals four super, world sheet supersymmetric formulation of two B theory in flat space? I think uh, Nathan is if Nathan is here. I mean, uh, I think Nathan is skeptical that there is such a theory, uh, but uh, 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 but I, I I mean it is indeed an ec a valid extrapolation. Uh, you would imagine that uh, by turning on this marginal deformation, you shouldn't be able to you shouldn't change that. Uh, and the deformation preserves uh, would, should preserve this uh, world sheet. Uh, uh, I should say that in the case of ADS three times S three, there is the hybrid picture which uh, tells you that at least uh, by taking the large radius of ADS three times S three, you sort of go to an R six times T four. And the Nathan and uh, Nathan has a, a uh, has a world sheet description which has n equals to two. Uh, uh, so it's sort of an alternate, uh, it's this uh, hybrid uh, sort of formulation. So it's not unnatural for one to expect that the maximally symmetric, uh, maximally supersymmetric uh, theory in 10 dimensions should have something like that. And uh, I, I don't know, Nathan should, uh, should comment uh, more, I think. Uh, yeah, Nathan, yeah, please. I can say something. So there's another aspect of this theory which hasn't been emphasized is that the ADS three times S3 is a WZW. So you have actually a super group, whereas in this case, it's a coset. And the question about the left moving versus the right moving sector is I think something key that also has to be addressed is what do you do with the right moving sector of this theory? Or So I think that might be related to this N equals four question. I'm, as I said, I, I don't know any N equals four version of the string theory that works. So. Of course, there's an n equals four topological thing that we did with Kummerin, but that's different. That you don't gauge the n equals four. So. I don't see waving hands, Leonardo. Oh hi, yes, I have two questions for uh, Rajesh and Matthias. The first is whether you have thought about uh, the brains in your model, because one of the spec, the natural guess would be that the spectrum here would be just a super young Mills uh, multiplet. Uh, the free super meets multiple on, on the D-brains uh, um, in your topological theory. Uh, so that would be very simple and perhaps would offer the way to start perturbative gauge theories gluon scattering from that, from that viewpoint. Yeah, I think Matthias should probably, I mean, we've discussed a little bit about uh, D-brains in this model, uh, but Matthias, you, do you want to say? Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, I mean, at the moment, we are trying to understand the deep brains for the simpler ADS3 case, I mean, uh, which is basic, I mean, from the point of view of the world sheet GFT, that's sort of technically simpler, so we are trying to understand that. But, uh, yeah, so this is work in progress, so, like, but the hope would be that this will work, and then one, one should also be able to understand it for the ADS5 case. I mean, it's, these are very simple world sheet theories, so you are... But in ADS3, the expectation for the open strings is less clear, whereas in, in true, ADS5, true. Um, there's, a sharp, there's a sharp conjecture that one would make. Right, but because of these spectrally flowed sectors, the construction of these D-brains is a little bit subtle for this world sheet theory. So first, we want to understand how this really works for ADS3, and then I agree that the interpretation will be clearer for ADS5, but technically, we first want to sharpen our tools for ADS3. And then my second question would be in the same spirit as Simon's question. There are certain topological sectors, for example, this is chiral algebra subsector of the n equal to four theory that, uh, according to uh, Gaiotti and Costello, is described by this B model on SL2C, and to see and to be nice to derive it from your from your construction. Yeah, no, indeed, uh, I think so, and I mean even uh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, uh, as I said, there are many, many things which are sort of like in the conifold theory. So, uh, uh, and for them, the dual sort of uh, thing is a kind of a conifold, uh, 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 like a subsector of the ADS5 times S5 bulk. So, it is perhaps not, uh, I mean, uh, I I don't quite see how it would work, but uh, uh, but it is uh, perhaps this gauge linear sigma model perspective might uh, tell you how to sort of uh, uh, embed some kind of a simpler gauge linear sigma model, which would describe that sector, and uh, 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 and uh, uh, and then uh, 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 and then that uh, would be dual to the chiral sector of the Young theory, but. Uh, 
yeah, uh, it's, it definitely would be very nice to see that. Uh... Thank you. While I don't see more hands, let me ask a question, maybe for Ajay or for Nathan. In these limits of uh, zero radius, of course, Nathan and Rajesh approach them differently. How hard is it to just compute at some simple correlation functions? Uh, do you think uh, for four points or for three points? From the world chief point of view? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so Matthias and I in the ADS3 case, uh, I think, uh, uh, I mean, with uh, initially with Lawrence and uh, and um, uh, and then later with uh, uh, and Andrea Day and uh, Bob Knighton, we uh, we computed uh, uh, several three point functions and uh, 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 and it's constrained very heavily by the uh, 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 by the spec by the the sort of word identities that. The free field construction automatically gives you so uh, so it's um, and this is how, how we were able to map to the symmetric product CFT correlators. Uh, so uh, so this is something uh, as Matthias mentioned in the talk for the ADS five case. Many things I think work analogously to how it did in ADS three. So we don't expect uh, we, uh, the correlators. I think at least simple th three point functions and. Uh, perhaps even four point functions at some point uh, uh, probably can be worked out. It's probably at the level of complexity. It's like in a in like computing twisted sectors in a free theory in an orbifold theory at, at, uh, in some sense. But Matthias, I don't know if you want to say more. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I, th I think we believe that the, the techniques we use for ADS3 will also work for ADS5, uh, but we haven't quite completed the analysis yet. Maybe I can just, Nathan also had different proposals, right? For zero radius, some topological theories and some idea for propagators appearing as some Wilson lines. Was that uh, finished and checked if it really gives the propagators and so on? So there are two things. So one thing is, I think for, for the Rajesh and Matthias, what they're doing, I think if they understood the world sheet, I think then they would be able to compute the correlators, I think for the ADS-5 case. So I think that's the missing ingredient. I think. I think it shouldn't be difficult. What I was doing is more speculative. So I was starting from the full ADS five times S five sigma model and trying to write it as something which is purely topological plus a deformation. And the part that is more speculative for me is the topological part. So um, I, I, don't, I don't think you should take the computations that I was doing in, a, in any rigorous sense. So it was just some hand-waving arguments. So I think the approach of Rajesh and and Matthias is much, I mean, much more solid. So, but you need to understand the world sheet. So I think that's that's the missing ingredient for them. Let's go to the IAS node and then to Shai and then to Stanta. Yeah, so this is a basic question about the Matthias's talk. So these uh, world sheet variables that you've had, are they purely right mover? movers or purely left movers or are they both or what exactly? Well, I think the picture we have is that they are both left and right moving and um, but and the, the physical state condition removes, uh, I mean, essentially all the all the non-zero modes except for these generalized zero modes and the generalized zero modes are somehow shared between left movers and right movers. But this is part of the story we don't really have a, a first principles derivation of. That's our, that's our expectation. Part of the reason is that that's similar to how it worked for ADS3. Part of the reason is that if you look at this classical solution of this Berkowitz type theory, this flux solutions, they have a certain number of holomorphic modes and they match exactly the number of these wedge modes that we see. So we want to think of them as sort of a part of this classical solution and there's only one set of these modes. So that would suggest that you can end up with only one set of these generalized zero modes. But at the moment, this is uh, somewhat vague. We don't have a very sharp way of getting that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Shai? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yes, we can hear you. You seem to be on an airplane. Uh, wait, I, can you hear me? Sorry, I don't know if that was Yeah, I can hear you. We can hear you, yeah. Well, uh, okay, so um, uh, well, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, my question is uh, for Matthias and Rajesh, uh, if they have uh, 
could consider their construction in the case of ABJ theory, because in that case, there's a limit which has vector-like degrees of freedom, um, you know, a free theory limit in particular. So I would imagine the construction might be simpler and also be easier to potentially connect to uh, the cilia theory. So it has the same number of degrees of freedom. Thank you. Uh... Some reply yeah. about ABJ? Yeah, I, 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 I think there's a, uh, I mean, as is probably familiar to many people, the, this, uh, the, the odd ADSs and the even ADSs, there's a slight, uh, uh, there's a natural progression in the odd ones and, and the even ones are somewhat exceptional in some ways. But uh, so I suspect that the ABJ theory, at least our approach of uh, finding the world sheet is going to be more complicated for the ABG theory. Uh, and I don't have any good ideas of how to actually even uh, 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 think of the right generalization um, uh, for that case. But I agree that it, it, for things like uh, understanding some of the aspects of the Vassiliev theory, that's uh, the vector you have a uh, you have this tunable um, uh, tunable uh, parameter there, but uh, of course that takes you. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, even if we did have a generalization, I think that would be out of the perturbative domain uh, of uh, of the world sheet to to go to some something like that. I suspect, but uh, 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 but I uh, for the Vasiliev case, I think the ADS three uh, there's a non I mean, even though the modes are non-propagating, except for the scalar, except for the matter fields, I suspect that we can learn at least some of the uh, structural ways in which is Vassiliev theory is embedded in string theory and how it's Higgs, et cetera, even in that case. Uh, but uh, but in, independent of that, I think the ABJ case uh, would be very interesting to understand. And I don't have any good thought about it. Uh, Stanta? Yes, uh, I have a slightly different question that also involves uh, discussions from last week. So now, uh, if we look at the n equal to four super Yang Mills theory, one would expect that uh, as you uh, as you dial the tough coupling from zero to very large values to infinity, you would not expect any uh, phase transition, large end phase transition. I think uh, that's uh, perhaps a correct statement. Now. Let's look at uh, the, uh, the presentation of Matthias and Rajesh, uh, that uh, there is a very good chance to uh, formulate a perturbation theory around lambda equal to zero. All the string bits will become strings and they'll sort of uh, be able to develop a perturbation theory with a finite radius in lambda. Now, my question is really that now, suppose I start jacking up lambda so of course the spectrum of the Hamiltonian will become very complicated. And at very large lambda, it becomes an extremely complicated spectrum that describes a black hole. The question is whether this idea that uh, non-perturbative gravity or uh, string theory uh, would correspond to an ensemble of uh, gauge theories, whether that idea actually can survive if these people are able to prove a correspondence at small lambda. That's my question, maybe. I don't know who would like to take up on that. You can wave, that's nice. Mm. Maybe I, let's I mean, do the following. Yeah. I have a, a suggestion. Let's uh, thank Rajesh and uh, she for a very nice formal part of the discussion. And uh, we can continue informally for a few more minutes. So now we are in the informal part. So maybe people will feel braver to address 